So I still program quite a bit in PHP, and I'm sure there's other languages like this, but the dollar sign before a variable, that was always an annoying thing for me. It didn't quite fit into my understanding of why this is good for a programming language. I'm not sure if you ever thought about that one. That is a cons. historical thing. There is a whole lineage of programming languages. PHP is one, Perl was one, uh, the Unix shell uh, is one of the oldest or, or all the different shells. The dollar was invented for that purpose because the very earliest shells had a notion of scripting, but they did not have a notion of parameterizing the scripting. Uh, right. And so a script is just a few lines of text where each line of text is a command that is read by a very primitive command processor that then sort of takes the first word on the line as the name of a program and passes all the all the rest of the line as text into the program for the program to figure out what to do with as arguments. And so by the time scripting was slightly more mature than the very first script, there was a convention that just like the first word of the line is uh, the name of the program, the following words uh, could be names of files, mm -hmm. input.txt, output.html, things like that. The next thing that happens is, oh, it would actually be really nice if we could have variables and especially parameters for scripts. Parameters are usually what starts this process. But now you have a problem because you can't just say the parameters are X, Y, and Z. And so now we, we call, say, let's say X is the input file and Y is the output file. And let's forget about Z for now. I have my program and I write program X, Y. Well, that already has a meaning because that presumably means X itself is the file. It's a file name. It's not a variable name. Uh, and so the inventors of, of things like the Unix shell, and I'm sure job command language in at IBM before that, uh, had to use something that made it clear to the script processor, here is an X that is not actually the name of a file, which you just pass through to the to the program you're running, here is an X that is the name of a variable. Yeah. And when you're writing a script processor, you try to keep it as simple as possible. Because at, at, as certainly in the, the 50s and 60s, uh, the thing that interprets the script was itself a very, had to be a very small program because it had to fit in a very small part of memory. And so saying, oh, just look at each character, and if you see a dollar sign, you jump to another section of the code, and then you gobble up characters, or say, until the next space or something, mm -hmm. and you say, that's the variable name. And so it was, was sort of invented as a clever way to make parsing of things that contain, bo contain both variable and fixed parts very easy in a very simple script processor. It also helps, even then, it also helps the human author and the human reader of the, the script to quickly see, oh, 20 lines down in the script, I see a reference to X, Y, Z. Oh, it has a dollar in front of it. So now we know that X, Y, Z must be one of the parameters of the script. Well, this is fascinating. Several things to say, which is, the leftovers from the simple script processor languages are now in code bases, like behind Facebook mm -hmm. or behind most of the back end. I think PHP is probably still runs most of the back end of the internet. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of it in Wikipedia too, for example. Yeah. It's funny that those decisions are not funny. It's fascinating that those decisions permeate through time. Just like biological systems, right? I mean, the, the sort of, the inner workings of DNA have been stable for, well, I don't know how long it was, like 300 
million years, half a billion years. Yeah. And there, there are all sorts of weird quirks there that don't make a lot of sense if you were to design a system like self-replicating molecules from scratch. Well, that system has a lot of interesting resilience. It has redundancy that results, like it messes up in interesting ways that still is resilient when you look at the system level of the organism. Mm -hmm. Code doesn't necessarily have that, a, program, a computer programming code. You'd be surprised how much resilience modern code has. I mean, if you if you look at the number of bugs per line of code, even in in very well tested code that in practice works just fine, mm -hmm. there are actually lots of things that don't work fine, and there are error correcting or self correcting mechanisms at many levels. Including probably the user of the code. <laughs> well, in the end, the user who sort of is told, well, you got to reboot your, your PC yeah. is part of that system. Yeah. And a slightly uh, less drastic thing is reload the page, which we all know how to do yeah. without thinking about it when something weird happens. You, you try to reload a few times before you say, oh, there's something really weird. Okay, or try to click the button again if the first time didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, that we should all have learned not to do that because that's probably just going to turn the light back off. Yeah, true. So do it three times. That's the, yeah. that's the right lesson. So, uh, and I wonder how many people actually like the dollar sign. Like you said, it is documentation. So to me, it's whatever the opposite of syntactic sugar is, syntactic poison. <laughs> to me, it is such a pain in the ass that I have to type in a dollar sign. Also super error prone. So it's not self-documenting. It's it's like a bug generating thing. It is a kind of documentation that's the pro and the con is it's a source of a lot of bugs. 